Today, I'm gonna review this Works Leaf Blower Mulcher and Vacuum and explain why I felt it was the best for my one acre of land on Use What You Got. This particular model is the WG512, and after a few weeks of research, I concluded why this was the best option for me. My main need here is a leaf vacuum, so keep that in mind throughout this review. The reason I chose this one came down to two things, the price and its features. Let's talk about the features first and why I feel like this blower slash vacuum is superior to most others. Works has come up with a clever and patented lever that, when twisted, changes the blower to a vacuum and vice versa. To my knowledge, no other brand can do this. For someone like me who has a large yard and prefers to be efficient while doing my yard work, anything to save time is preferred. Other companies that sell blowers and mulchers or vacuums require you to completely pull apart the connecting hoses and what would normally take you a few minutes to do only takes you seconds with this one. I mainly purchased this for the mulching and vacuum capabilities. This model is a bit heavy at 8.6 pounds, so your arms may get a bit tired depending on how large your yard is. I do wish that the bag had straps like a backpack, but there is one strap that you can put over your shoulder, so it will suffice. So now let's talk about the other attachments that work sells. You can purchase the vacuum by itself. You can buy it with a waste bag and or you can buy the Leaf Pro version which allows you to run a hose attachment directly to a trash can. I do have a battery powered Ryobi blower as well as an electric Black & Decker blower. For most of the general blowing of leaves and debris around my house, I use my Ryobi blower and for everything else, I will use the Works. I would like to show some comparisons between the three I have regarding the blower strength. I was actually really curious to settle a baseline for the decibel levels of each blower. The Black & Decker sat around 80 to 81 decibels, while the Ryobi peaked at 79 decibels. But as I was watching it, it seemed like it was sitting more around 75, 76 decibels. The work system has two speed settings, and on the lowest setting, it was already peaking at 85 decibels. At the higher setting, it was about the same volume. This kind of seemed like a fluke because from the time I spent with it, it is definitely louder. But I tried to make sure that with each blower, I stood about two feet away from my phone the whole time and I pointed the blower in different directions. Now that I'm done with that, I wanted to see how the blowers themselves performed. The Black & Decker does a very good job and in the past, it was my go-to if I needed to move a pile of leaves. The Ryobi is the weakest of them all, but still does a really good job. As I mentioned before, it's usually my go-to if I'm just blowing general leaves and debris off sidewalks, my driveway, and other solid surfaces. You may have noticed the GoPro on each blower. I chose not to add the footage because it was so shaky and difficult to watch, and I didn't want to make anyone nauseous. This first clip is of the work system on its low setting. At the low setting, I would say it was about equivalent or a little better than the Black & Decker blower. Once I switched it to the higher setting, it actually impressed me even more. I really do hope that this comes across on camera. Since I've talked about several different things, hopefully some of it has been helpful. I have a lot more to talk about before we get to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed the content so far, please consider subscribing, maybe hitting that like button. That helps me out a lot and I really appreciate it. So let's get back into the video. Now, you might be thinking, why didn't I invest in either a gas or battery powered blower or a leaf vacuum? And I have an answer for that, money. In my research, it seems that the Steel SH86 is one of the best gas powered vacuums you can buy, but it is three times as much as the works unit. And even with that, the CFM was only 444. So if you don't know what that means, don't worry, it's okay. I'm actually gonna explain it very soon. So what about the battery powered vacuums? Well, they only cost around 30 or $40 more than the electric ones, and there's a good amount of brands out there. And the Works brand even has a line of them. 
But to be honest with you, I had originally looked at Ryobi's version since I used their tools. Unfortunately, I would have to invest in their whole 40 volt battery system, which I do not currently own any of, and the cheapest battery I could find was 120, and they go all the way up to $250 per battery. If you already have a few of those batteries, then it may be the better system for you. But it would cost me quite a lot to move over to that system, since I think I would need at least two to three or more batteries just to take care of my yard. For the vacuum system and the cheapest battery, I could buy two and a half work systems. There is a caveat though, it's electric. So I'll have to pull a 100 foot extension cord around while I work. The other feature that really attracted me to this work system, aside from the genius ability to switch between the vacuum and blower so quickly is the CFM. So what is CFM? Well, airflow is the volume of air moving through a vacuum. It is measured in CFM or cubic feet per minute. The more airflow through a vacuum, the better. As I mentioned earlier, the Steel Leaf Vacuum, which is one of the best gas powered vacuums I could find online, only has 444 CFM. And this isn't bad by any means, but it doesn't even come close to the 600 CFM that can be found on this model I purchased. Works has several models of blowers and vacuums and their 509 version actually has a higher mulching ratio of 18 to one versus the 512s which I purchased which is 16 to one. And beyond the two bags of mulching ratio, the CFM on that one is actually much lower. Okay, so let's talk about my last point, which is the price. At the time of purchase, this cost me $108. The steel is $300, and the Ryobi without batteries is $140. So I wanted to share a few things with you during my wrap up. The first thing I would say is that it is definitely very user friendly. The second thing is the bag attachment is pretty awesome in itself where the clip, you just squeeze it, it pops right on, and when you take it off, it comes right off. Having the ability to quickly change it from the blower to the vacuum and vice versa is like a game changer in my mind. I am definitely happy with the amount of suction. This is gonna be a huge win for us because the amount of leaves that we have and the fact that it mulches up to 16 bags worth in one bag is in my mind pretty amazing even though I know this is probably a very common number among leaf vacuums. I think because of what you get for the price you pay for this, I think I can deal with the hassle of pulling a cable around. This may be common on leaf vacuums but I noticed that it kicks up a lot of dust so I would definitely suggest if you use one of these to get yourself a mask and to wear that when you're doing the vacuuming. I do really think this is a very capable vacuum blower combination thing. I don't know, in my mind, it's so cool. But anyways, I appreciate your time and watching the video till now. If you enjoyed it, leave a comment down below if you have any questions or you, you wanna add something to the video, or maybe I forgot something, which is probably possible. Again, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and don't forget to use what you got.